This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Woman arrested after throwing chemical on bus passengers. A woman has been arrested after she reportedly threw a chemical substance on passengers in a bus in Halfway Tree St. Andrew yesterday morning. Three persons, including the driver, were injured. One of the injured is in serious condition. About 6 o'clock, the accused, the woman, and another female passenger got into a dispute on the bus, which was parked near York Plaza. The accused dosed the other woman with a chemical substance, causing her to fall unconscious. The news was informed that the injured woman is undergoing emergency surgery. The driver and another passenger suffered a burn during the incident. The police have collected statements from the bus passengers. A senior investigator told the news that charges will be laid against the alleged attacker. No legal claim made against the government in relation to COVID vaccine. The Ministry of Health says no one has so far made a legal claim on the government in relation to adverse reactions to the COVID-19 vaccine. The government has said it would take responsibility for serious adverse effects experienced by Jamaicans. Dunstan Bryan, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, says it is expected that any such claim would be made through the courts. So, as you would recall, Jamaica has not set up a formal compensation mechanism for the vaccination program. What we have done in our local jurisdiction is to indemnify the manufacturer. However, liabilities around uh, around vaccination still relate to the government's um, or the judicial review and the judicial um, examination and the award of compensation based out of that normal process of persons going through the legal system. So right now, no such claim has been laid against the government of Jamaica in terms of the vaccination program. The health ministry says to date, there have been 353 reports of adverse reactions to the vaccine, 72 of them serious. 11 people died after taking the vaccine, but the ministry says nine of those deaths were coincidental, while the cause of the other two deaths is undetermined. Crawford wants a special consideration for service industry in sexual harassment bill. Opposition Senator Damon Crawford wants a sexual harassment bill to give special consideration to service industries like tourism where he says interactions between workers and customers could easily lead to claims of harassment. Speaking in the debate on the bill in the Senate on Friday, Senator Crawford said the service industry is unique because of the constant interaction between customers and workers. He also noted that tourism workers in particular could find themselves in trouble even when they are offering what they believe to be good customer service. The service worker is at risk for being harassed and at risk for being perceived to be a harasser because of the necessary interface between them, other staff and, and customers, but also because of the multiple variations that exist human to human interaction. And so what is habitual of a bartender in how they serve a person may be perceived as harassment without any mediating circumstance of information being given. Senator Crawford also suggested that there should be a mechanism for warning persons when they commit some of the offenses under the Act. He argued that while some actions are easily identifiable and understood as inappropriate, others are more nuisance. Some women and some others would say, just don't do it, just don't do it, just don't do it. Just don't compliment a person. Just don't say hi to a person, just don't wink to a person. Because our natural inclination is to carry the more egregious ones of saying, yeah, just don't touch the person's breast. Correct, don't touch the person's breast. Yes, just don't spank her on her bottom. Yes, just don't spank her on her bottom. Just don't say something crass and rude like, yo, you forget this and you forget that. Yes, don't do that. But this bill carried much further into some very simple activities that variability can cause. A visitor comes for four days. There is a complaint on the third that based on our perception 
I was harassed. How is that handled when the visitor leaves on the fourth day? And what is the redress to the person that feels that they were harassed? Is it now the duty of the firm who accommodated that visitor? Or is there a strategy and method for the person no longer in our shores to answer to the claim? How would that be treated? Now, go further if multiple individuals suggest that an environment was created conducive to harassment within the firm. How would we treat that firm? The debate on the sexual harassment bill got underway after 11 o'clock. It was eventually passed on Friday evening. Car thieves running wild in Portmore. Car thieves are running rampant in Portmore in St. Catherine and homes, malls, and make-do parking spots outside the Portmore Tax Office on Brayton Parkway seem to be their preferred hunting grounds. It is a worrying reality that has forced the police in the division to employ overt and covert means to clamp down on the seemingly high-tech crooks who reportedly dress to fit the context of their heists. Their technology also seems to override vehicles with sophisticated security systems. Head of the division, Superintendent Christopher Phillips, also believes bandits operating in the Portmore Pines area may be part of a vibrant interdivisional car stealing ring and that tax office customers are prime targets. 56 of the 134 vehicles stolen in Portmore this year were from the Britain Parkway in and around Portmore Pines, he explained. We have an issue with car theft across the division but more so along that Portmore Pines area, the Sovereign Village and outside the tax office, Phillips told the news. There is a parking facility at the front of the tax office because you know people can't park on the inside. We are seeing quite a number of cases from there. It doesn't matter the time of day, he said, and the crooks, who often drive the stolen cars into other police divisions, make the best of heavy business days when the malls and the tax office are crowded. There have been a few breakthroughs and arrests, said the superintendent, and sometimes when we recover those vehicles, there are no visible signs of forced entry. Last week, however, Tax Administration Jamaica in Portmore downplayed the seriousness of the situation as outlined by the police. We are aware of a few incidents of motor vehicles being stolen in the vicinity of the Portmore Tax Office. However, we cannot confirm that the majority of the motor vehicles stolen in the municipality comes from in front of the tax office, stated TAJ's Chief Corporate Communications Officer, Maris Haunton. We are not aware of this being a problem at any of our locations. We have, however, been advised of one such incident occurring outside of our Spanish Town tax office. No such incidents have been reported at our Kingston Revenue Service Center, she explained, adding that, Cops maintain a presence outside the Portmore tax office during peak hours. Houghton added, Tax Administration Jamaica regularly reviews security arrangements for all its locations. Security arrangements have increased at most locations, particularly to assist in the management of crowds and to maintain the COVID-19 prevention protocols. A different picture, one more in tune with police reports, was painted by vendors in front of the tax office and store owners in the Sovereign Village in Portmore last week. They say motorists need to be more wary of where they park. All the while I hear people come out here and start ball that them car gone. It's a regular thing, said the tax office vendor. I don't know what kind of thing the man them using because it is like it doesn't even matter. The security that is on your car, them still gone with it. Then the owners come out and ask if I see this and if I see that. But we're not paying attention to that. If they ask to keep an eye, that would be a different thing. But some believe they're going to have to spend the money and support we afterwards. And they don't want that, he said. Superintendent Phillips said he has implemented a cross-division investigative team and investigators will be far-reaching. From our walk through observing the commercial district, we have gathered that a lot of persons are observing these criminals but are not coming forward to talk to the police, he said. 24 of the vehicles stolen so far this year were taken from the Waterford Police area, 18 from Bridgeport Police Jurisdiction, the Caymanus Police and Helsha Police recorded four and two cases respectively. Also in the division, Old Harbour, Old Harbour Bay and Central Village accounted for 26, 
one and the 13, respectively, of the vehicles stolen since January. Opposition wants Lionel Myris' TPD co-appointment rescinded. The opposition says the decision to appoint Lionel Mary as the interim head of the tourism product development company is alarming and should be rescinded. In a statement yesterday, spokesperson on tourism, Janice Allen, contended that a cloud still hangs over Mary arising from his role in the scandal at the state-owned oil refinery Petrojam. Mary, a then director of the Petrojam Corporation Jamaica, Petrojam's parent company, faced a strong backlash for his role in controversial multi-million dollar donations by the oil refinery. Petrodram had acknowledged that an email Mary sent to then Petrodram general manager Floyd Greenlee formed the basis on which the company granted a $10 million donation requested by the Homestead Citizens for Action Benevolent Society. The donation was requested for the construction of two classroom blocks at the Homestead Primary School in St. Catherine, and the money was paid directly to the institution. And a performance audit of Petrodram, which was conducted by the Auditor General's Department, found that Mary also forwarded on behalf of a citizen group identified as Sydenham Citizens Association an email to the Grindley requesting a $9 million donation for a community project. This donation is the subject of an investigation by the Major Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Agency. During an appearance before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament in May 2019, Mary acknowledged that in both cases he was merely acting as a courier. Mary insisted at the time that when he forwarded the emails to Grandly, he was not acting in his capacity as a PCJ director or as an assistant to former Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley. The opposition spokesperson is asserting that Mary has failed to distinguish himself as a fit and proper manager of public funds. Allen said that the Petrodram scandal is still fresh in the minds of Jamaicans who have not had closure to several scandalous actions. If the tourism minister Ed Bartlett does not rescind this improper decision, it will be a clear indication that the government continues to pay only lip service in the fight against the corruption and does not support good governance, which was missing at Petrojam, Allen argued. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.